Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So this is a new Sennheiser 8650 or SHX 8650, however you want to say it. Now, as well as being a 10 watt dual band ham radio transceiver for the two meter and 70 centimeter band, it does also transmit on PMR UK 446 and the GMRS frequencies. It also has an inbuilt HF multi-mode receiver, similar to that that we've seen on the recent releases from Radtel and Kuangsheng. But the question is, is it any good? Now in the box, we get a couple of antennas, a programming cable, a belt clip, a wrist strap, a desktop charger, and two mains wall adapters. The desktop charger requires a 12 volt input, and this can be used with one of the supplied mains wall adapters that outputs 12 volts. The other mains wall charger is simply a USB power supply, which of course you can use with the included USB-C cable to charge the battery without using the desktop charger. The programming cable is the standard that we see on most radios, and unfortunately there is no USB-C programming support, so you do need to use this type of cable that has the Kenwood style speaker mic plug on it for programming. The included battery has a 1900 milliamp hour capacity and it has a USB-C port on the rear where you can use the included charger to charge it. Now there appears to be a screw to hold the battery in place. Personally, I do not really like these. A simple spring-loaded clip is good enough. However, I do understand that using a screw on a battery to hold it in place is okay if it's a waterproof radio. The VHF and UHF supplied antenna says it supports from 136 to 174 megahertz and then 400 to 470 megahertz. Now that's the kind of standard antenna that we see with most of these types of radios these days as it's kind of like a generic antenna that they just chuck in the box. The other antenna that you get in the box is for receiving HF using the HF port on the radio. Now this telescopic antenna actually feels quite nice and solid and it extends to just over one meter in length. And once you've seen one radio, you've kind of seen them all right, and the 8650 has no real difference in terms of looks. Although it doesn't have a flashlight, you'll be pleased to know. All that actually might trigger some of you. Now the usual keypad, front-facing speaker, and microphone, which in fact, the speaker on this radio is actually pretty impressive. It actually sounds fantastic, and I'll let you hear that later. Down the left side, there's two PTT buttons, one for VFOA and one for VFOB. And that bottom button is a user definable button. Long or short presses can be assigned to separate features or functions. The speaker mic socket is one of the standard Kenwood style. And there's also a sticker just to let you know that this radio can receive SSB, AM and FM. Weirdly enough, the serial number sticker states that the radio will output less than 5 watts. But later in the video, I'll show you the power test, and well, it outputs nearly double that. On the top is the on and off knob, which of course also acts as the volume. And this is alongside the UHF and VHF antenna port, and then underneath the little rubber flap there is where we find the connection for the HF antenna. Now with the antenna attached, I think it's not a bad looking radio. And it actually looks kind of cool with two antennas attached at the same time. Now, after powering on, it's quite obvious that the layout looks different to other radios that we've seen in the past. The lower two frequencies show the frequency that is set for both of the VFOs. The very top frequency is just showing which frequency is actually selected. The screen is a little small and the font's even smaller, especially when you head into the system menus. As always, one of the first things I like to do is ensure the backlight is always on, turn off any beeps or voice prompts. But of course, beeps and voice prompts are very welcomed by those that are visually impaired. So it's still nice to see these features available as standard. Pressing the side function button loads the radio receiver. And this first test that I'll use will just be using the telescopic antenna which came with the radio. And I'll be using it indoors question to you today do you think there should be more 20 mile an hour zones do you love 20 mile an hour zones in your way in your mind would you have 20 mile an hour zones everywhere that people live i'm not sure how well you could hear that but the built-in speaker actually sounds really good so now let's try listening to some ham radio transmissions on the 20 meter band and still using the telescopic antenna that came with it 
Also notice on the bottom of the screen that there is a row of features. There's a step, bandwidth, LNA and BFO setting. Now we've seen that kind of style of configuration or settings on previous radios. You can press the start button to choose which one to edit and then use the arrow keys to alter the value. Now this is especially handy for adjusting the BFO value which allows you to fine tune SSB transmissions as the main step's lowest value is one kilohertz. Brussels, my cool sign is Italy, Quebec to Uniform, Lima, India. Quebec to United, Lima, 73. Yes, sir, thank you. Ciao. India, Quebec to United, Lima, CQ20. Well, that's pretty impressive, able to receive some 20 meter SSB stations indoors, just using that telescopic antenna. Of course, we still get that whooshing sound as you're changing frequencies, which personally I do find kind of annoying, but I guess that's the limitations of the chips that they're using for receiving. OK, so now let's connect my external NFED half-wave antenna and see how well it performs. Other radios that I've tested before fully overload, and, well, you get mirror images of signals and it becomes pretty unusable. OK, Nick, yeah, that's a little way away from me. That's nearly an hour, hour and a half run from me. Uh, it's not easy to get to from Barry from here. There's no good roads. Uh, they're all, all, all naff, little uh, two-lane stuff, and there's no uh, no decent decent way to get there. But it's, it's certainly close on these ball anyway. OK, Nick, thanks very much. Nice to hear you on this afternoon. And uh, have a good day. M7NHC, Mike Zero, Charlie Hotel, Kilo. Yeah, thanks very much, Andy. Have a good, good, good week ahead, mate. See you soon. The other M7 now that's not too bad, it actually seemed to work well. Now an interesting feature of this 8650 radio is that under the Bluetooth settings you can choose between data and audio. This means you'll be able to use a mobile application to program the radio and then if you switch the Bluetooth to audio you'll be able to pair devices like Bluetooth speakers, headsets or even a Bluetooth speaker microphone. Now, at the time of making this video, the 8650 did not appear to be supported on any of the mobile programming applications that I've got, and the Windows software was also not available. However, when they are available, I may make another video on programming. Now, that really depends on how interested you guys are in this radio. OK, so let's test some more. This time, we're going to test the RF output power. And in this test, I'll be connected to a 100 watt dummy load through my SWR1000 power and SWR power meter I got from Moonmaker here in the UK. On 70 centimeters at around 435 megahertz, it appears the high output setting shows around 7 watts. Now, if we move up to the UK PMR band for those that are interested, which of course it would be illegal to use this on the PMR band in the UK, it does actually output around 8 watts, which is a little more than the UHF band for. 70 centimeters. That's slightly strange in itself. Up at 462 megahertz, however, it appears the output is around 10 watts. That's even more strange. On the 2 meter band, at around 145 megahertz, and with the radio set to high power, the output shows 9 watts. So this radio does chuck out a nice little bit of RF. Receiving local stations or even my all star node in the shack with the 8650. Sounds pretty nice. Take a listen to this. VVA returning. Yeah, I'll copy it. And, um, I, yeah, I have been watching some of the notes on both Discord and... Uh, and, um, on the and it would uh, say there's a dupe or something like that. <clears throat> and I kept on... Uh, when my first field, I kept on saying, so what if it's a dupe? Oh, well, that's the way it goes. Okay, anyway. The 8650 also has a spectrum view, so you can take a quick glance at the band activity. You can also adjust the step size in which the scan is performed and you can also change the mode of modulation just by using the buttons on the front panel. Now it will stop on the strongest signal from my testing here. Airband receive is also possible and the AM demodulation appears to work very well indeed. I do have to turn off my studio lights though as they do seem to splatter a little on the airband. Now that's on any radio that I test, and you probably notice that in other videos. It's not just this radio. At one one five zero, wind three six zero degrees four knots. Variable between three two zero and zero four zero degrees. Visibility three thousand eight hundred meters. Now transmitting with the eighty six fifty sounds like this. This is uh, MC 
zero DQW testing the audio on the new Sennheim SHX 8650 M zero DQW testing the audio on the new 8650 handheld radio. Mike Zero Delta Quebec whiskey testing over. So lastly, then let's take a look at spurious emissions. Now up on the two meter band at 145 megahertz, it appears that the 8650 radio is extremely clean. And that's with the radio set to high power. Of course, I'm using a 60 dB attenuator in line with my radio and the tiny SA Ultra. So up on the 70 centimeter band at 435 megahertz, things look a little different. While the second and third harmonics appear to be non-existent, we do have a fourth and fifth harmonic way higher in strength than I think is acceptable. If we fire up an SDR and take a look around 1.3 gigahertz, which is in line with that fourth harmonic, we can even hear me talking through the radio. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Now let me know what you think about the Sennheim SHX8650 down in the comments below. Now it was a shame the software was not available at the time of making this video, but as I said earlier, if enough of you like this radio, then I can make another video talking about the software options once they're released. In fact, I'm not entirely sure when this radio will be for sale. However, by the time you see this video, it may or may not actually be for sale. If it is, I'll leave links down below where you can buy it from. Of course, there's a lot more to this radio and a lot more that I could have tested, but these kind of overview videos should really only be around 10 minutes long. So just to give you a taster of what the radio can and cannot do, especially testing things like spurious emissions, power, reception and transmission, as they are the main things that we're really interested in. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you in the next video.